Hi, I love your background. You're like, you're down in the basement. Nice yes, work. Yes, I am one of the boys. Yes, you um, are, clearly. <laughs> speaking of the boys, um, I did not think the show could get darker than it has before, and yet it seemed really to do so this season. And yet it is always darkest before the dawn. Yeah. So this will go after the first three episodes. So can yeah. we talk about Dawn of the Seven uh, and just what an amazing uh, mirroring. Like it really felt like we we're just actually in the boys universe, just slightly <laughs> adjusted version of our world. What was it like putting that together and uh, getting Charlie's? Um, yeah, I mean, my some of my favorite stuff of uh, doing the boys is like the in-world stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's so funny to me and I love how on social, it even like takes on a life of its own. It's doing this incredible thing that I've never seen before, mm -hmm. which is people are commenting on like the Dawn of the Seven trailer, like in world, you know, talking as if, oh my God, I hope Translucent's in it and, and Homelander's the best. And like, it's such an interesting like online virtual cosplay that's starting to happen that mm -hmm. I like love, cause I love meta. Um, so, we were just, we were, you know, we felt like we had to show Dawn of the Seven because we spent mm -hmm. so much time last season making it. And it it seemed right that Vought would reshoot it to, you know, make Stormfront the villain. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of Charlize, uh, you know, I mean, it, she, like many of the cameos in our show, like it followed, you know, she got in through like the rigorous process of whoever returned Seth Rogen's calls. <laughs> Um, and, and she did, uh, and like, I'm so grateful cause it's so amazing, but like, mm -hmm. I feel like she probably was like, yeah, I'll do a favor. Oh, it's like a pop in cameo. Right. Okay, cool. And then, and then like the next call is from wardrobe who needs to fit her for her super <laughs> suit. And then she has to like show up on a full day of production with all of these cameras. And like, you know, I think maybe it was more than she bargained for, but she was the champ of champs. Like, like, I don't know if you've heard, but she's a pretty good actress. And, <laughs> and like the commitment she gives to those stupid lines, <laughs> like, <they're> the most <laughs> ridiculous lines. And she's just, and you know, and like a, we were, I was talking to her that morning. I was like, just, it's the most serious thing in the world. And she like, so delivers like with such heart uh, that I, I, you know, I hope Seth bought her something yeah. very nice because well, <laughs> she, did a lot. she did a lot for us. We had to stand. I just want to quickly say Frenchie and Kimiko this season, uh, love, laugh, cry. Um, what was it like, like telling her journey, I think more than ever before? Yeah, it's one of my favorite storylines um, because like you're really watching her blossom as a personality and mm -hmm. like, and, and really starting to express her own agency, um, you know, so for so much of Kamiko's life, she was doing, you know, what other people wanted and, and, you know, and, but for, so to give her, it was really important to me um, that she start to, even though she might not be speaking literally that she really has a voice and she really has a point of view and a perspective and so it's a blast to do it and and Karen like Karen deserves more credit than I think she gets because she is doing like one of the great high wire acts on tv right now um, which is like I defy you to pick a moment where you don't um, completely understand where Kamiko's head is at and what she's mm. thinking and how she's feeling. And, and she's doing it without saying a damn word. Like that is so hard. Um, and Karen does it so effortlessly um, that it's just, it's, it's, it's truly an astounding thing to watch. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I yeah, no, thank show. you. I cannot wait.